What's up, everybody, and welcome back to OpenStax Algebra and Trigonometry Chapter 2 Practice Test. Let's do it. Question 1 asks us to graph the following. So we got 2y equals 3x plus 4. So we can put this into slope-intercept form. That's my preference, and then graph. So first I'm going to divide everything by 2, and I've got y equals 3 over 2x plus 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So we have a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of 3 halves. So here I'm going to plot the 2, and then I'm going to go up 3 over 2, up 3 over 2. And here's the final graph. Boom. Done. Find the x and y intercepts of this equation and sketch the graph of the line using just the intercepts plotted. So a really nice method here when we're in our standard form is to find the intercepts by plugging in 0 for x. That's going to be your y-intercept. And then to get the x-intercept, you're going to plug in 0 for y. So if I were to zero out x, I'd have negative 4y equals 12, divide both sides by negative 4, and y would equal negative 3. So that's my y-intercept. Then if I was to zero out the y, I'd have 3x equals 12, divide both sides by 3. We've got x equals 4, so that is my x-intercept. So now we can plot these. So y-intercept of negative 3, x-intercept of 4, right, 4, 0, and then connect the dots. And here's your graph. Boom, done. Right, the interval notation for the set of numbers represented by x is less than or equal to 9. So it's everything less than 9, which means we're going all the way back to negative infinity, and then we're coming up to 9. And since it's less than or equal to, we're including 9, which means we do the square bracket. Boom, done. Here we're supposed to solve for this equation, so I'm going to start by distributing. Boom, boom. So we got 6x, right? 3 times 2 is 6. 6x minus 15. And then we're now, now we're distributing the entire negative 3. So it becomes negative 3x. And the negative 3 times negative 7 is positive 21. And the right side stays the same. All right. Now we're going to combine like terms. 6x minus 3x is 3x. Negative 15 plus positive 21 is positive 6. Now we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. We're going to get the x's together, consolidate the variables. And we got x plus 6 equals negative 9. Last step, we're going to subtract 6 from both sides. Boom. Negative 9 and negative 6 make negative 15 for the win. Done. So here we're supposed to solve for x, and we've got the, the situation where we have denominators of x plus 4, x minus 2, and I want to get into a better situation. So here's how I'm going to approach this. I want to get this into a position where I've just got a fraction or a proportion equaling a proportion. So I want to get this 4 over x minus 2, but I can't just put it over x minus 2. I also have to multiply by x minus 2 on the numerator, right? Because that's like multiplying by 1, x minus 2 over x minus 2. Okay, now I've got 5 over x plus 4 equals, I'm going to go ahead and distribute this by the way, 4x minus 8 plus 3, because now it's all over x minus 2. And then we can combine like terms here. And we get 4x minus 5 over x minus 2. And now we can cross multiply. Boom, boom. So I got 5 times x minus 2. So I'm going to go ahead and make that 5x minus 10, right? Because the 5 is going to multiply both of those pieces. And on the right-hand side, we've got 4x minus 5 times x plus 4. So I'm going to write that like this. Now I'm going to foil the right side. We don't have a ton of room, so I might have to move this up here. So we got, again, 5x minus 10 equals, that's 4x squared, and then we've got 4x times 4 is 16x, negative 5 times x is negative 5x. So we got 16x plus negative 5x is 11x and then negative 5 times 4 is minus 20. Now I'm going to set everything equal to 0 because we got a quadratic situation. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. Let's see, we got to make room here. So I'm going to say subtract 5x from both sides and add 10 to both sides, right? So the 10's going to go here, and the 5x is going to go here like this. So now we've got 4x squared plus 6x, right? 11x and negative 5x make 6x, and then negative 20 and positive 10 make minus 10 equal to 0. Now I can divide everything by 2, and I'll have 0 equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. Man, okay, we don't have a lot of room. So now we're down to the last step. we got to factor this. And since this has a leading coefficient, check this out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to use the star method. So I got a term of 2 up top. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. And then at the bottom we have 3. What two values multiply negative 10 and add to 3? 
that's a positive five and a negative two. And then just like in the star method, we reduce this to be one over negative one. Now we can factor. So we have zero equals two X plus five. That's this part, right? And then times one X minus one. And now we get our two solutions. What zeros this out? That's gonna be negative five halves. What zeros this out? That's gonna be positive one. Those are your winners and done. And by the way, just forgot to state the restrictions for this question. Uh, the restrictions are where this would zero out and this would zero out. And so X cannot equal negative four, which would zero out. This guy can't divide by zero and this one two. So those are our two restrictions. By the way, this answer, if we, if our solutions were the same as one of the restricted values, then it wouldn't be a legitimate solution, but they're different. So we're good. So for x, write the answer in simplest radical form. All right, so we've got this situation. It's basically quadratic, but I don't like that 3 under there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything by 3. So check this out. We get x squared, right? When I multiply that, the 3 is going to cancel out. Minus 3x equals negative 3 halves. Now I'm going to add 3 halves to both sides. So I have x squared minus 3x plus 3 halves equals 0. Now I'm gonna use the quadratic formula because this doesn't look like it's gonna be factorable. So the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus four ac all over two a. So here we go. We got b, and this is my a, b, and c. It's just the coefficients here. So we got negative b, which is positive three, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is nine minus four a, and then my c value is three halves all over two times a again a is this invisible one here so we just got a two on the bottom all right let's keep going so four times one times three halves three halves times four is six so this becomes nine minus six which is just three and our final answer is three plus or minus square root of three over two and this is the winner done here we're going to solve this absolute value inequality so first i'm going to split it as this is always our good starting point we're going to say 2x plus 3 is less than 5. So first, we just remove the absolute value, keep everything the same. In the second version, we say 2x plus 3 is greater, we flip that, than negative 5. And then we just solve these two inequalities. So we subtract 3 from both sides. 2x is less than 5 minus 3 is 2. Divide by 2x is less than 1. Here, we're going to subtract 3 as well. We got 2x is greater than negative 8. Divide by 2, divide by 2, and we've got x is greater than negative four. So this is our solution set here. And by the way, we started with a less than. So this is an and situation. Its solutions are where x is both less than one and greater than negative four. So if we were to put this into interval notation, this is everything starting at the lower bound of negative four, but not including it because this is greater than, going all the way up to positive one. Again, it's less than, so we don't include the one. So we have these type of parentheses, boom, done. So here we're gonna find the equation of the line with these two points. So check it out. We're gonna use point slope, and then we're gonna put it into slope intercept form. So first I need to find the slope. So I'm gonna subtract the y values divided by the difference of the x value. So I got two minus negative three over negative four minus five. It doesn't matter which order we go in, but as long as we choose this to be our front point, we have to stay consistent. So I did two minus five and then I did negative, I'm sorry, excuse me, two minus negative three and then negative four minus five. Double negative becomes a plus, so then we have five on top. Negative four minus five is negative nine. So we got to slope a negative five nines. Now I'm gonna use point slope. I'm gonna choose arbitrarily the first point. So point slope is y minus y1, which is that y value two equals slope negative five nines times x minus this value. So x minus negative four is really x plus four. Now we're gonna distribute. And I got y minus two equals negative five ninths x and the negative five nines times four is negative 20 nines. Last but not least, we're gonna add two to both sides. I'm gonna add two here, but obviously we need to uh, combine it with the negative 20 nines. So two is the same as 18 over 9. Right now it's got that nice common denominator. So finally we can end with y equals negative 5 ninths x and then 18 ninths plus negative 20 ninths would be negative 2 ninths and this is the winner done. 
So we're trying to find a line that passes through this point and is perpendicular to this. Remember, when it's perpendicular, the slope is opposite reciprocal. So this is negative two-fifths. That means it's going to be a slope of five over two. Now I'm going to use point slope. So I've got y minus y1, boom, equals five-halves slope times x minus two. Now we're going to put this into slope-intercept form. Let's distribute like so, and I got y minus one equals five-halves x. Five-halves times negative two is going to be negative five. Last but not least, we're going to add one to both sides. Boom, y equals five over two x minus four. Boom, done. Here we're simplifying radicals. So what we're going to try and do is get the same radical, and then we can add them together and combine them. So here we go. We got negative four, but guess what? Now we got a square root of a negative. That's going to involve a the imaginary number i. So we can rewrite this as negative 1 times 4. Square root of negative 1 is i. Square root of 4 is 2. So that simplifies to 2i. And then over here, we can rewrite the square root of negative 16 as negative 1 times 16 like so. Square root of negative 1 again is i. And then square root of 16 is 4. Four. So these guys are all multiplying. So this becomes 2i plus 3 times 4, which is 12i. Combine those, and we get 14i for the win. Done. Here we're given a rational expression with imaginaries in there. And the main idea here is we don't want an imaginary in the denominator. So the way we get rid of it is by multiplying by the conjugate. So what's the conjugate? So we take that denominator value that we see, 2 plus 3i, and we simply negate the imaginary part. So now it's 2 minus 3i. And that's what we're going to multiply the top and bottom by. So check this out. On top, we're going to FOIL. We got 4 times 2, which is 8. And we got 4 times negative 3i, which is negative 12i. Then we got negative i times 2, which is negative 2i. And then we've got negative i times negative 3i, which is positive 3i squared. All right. Now we're going to combine like terms before we look at the denominator. So negative 12i, negative 2i, is negative 14i. Now, what about this i squared? Remember, i is the square root of negative 1. So i squared is negative 1. So negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 8 gives us 5. All right, now we can look at this denominator. This is where it's kind of cool. So we do 2 times 2, which is 4. Then we do 2 times negative 3i, negative 6i. And then this becomes a positive 6i. So those i's cancel out, and that's what we wanted. Last but not least, 3i times negative 3i, that's minus 9i squared. Again, i squared is negative 1. So it's negative 9 times negative 1, which is positive 9. So we'll rewrite it like so. 5 minus 14i over 4 plus 9. So of course, 4 plus 9 gives us 13. And we got 5 minus 14 I. And then if we want to split this up into the real and the imaginary, we can just break it up into two separate fractions. So it's 5 over 13 minus 14i over 13. Boom. Done. So here we got to solve this quadratic. There's multiple ways you can do it. Uh, I'm going to take the square root method. So check this out. I got 3x minus 1 squared. And what I'm going to do in this first step is I'm going to add 1 to both sides because look how cool this is. Now I have equals to 25. Now that's a nice perfect square here. And we got a something squared here. So let's take the square root of both sides. And we get 3x minus 1 equals plus or minus 5. Now we can split this into two equations. 3x minus 1 equals positive 5. 3x minus 1 equals negative 5. Now let's add 1 to both sides. Boom, we get 3x equals 6. Divide by 3, divide by 3 x equals 2. That's one solution. Second solution, we're going to add 1 to both sides. We get 3x equals negative 4. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. And x equals negative 4 thirds. Those are the winners. Done. This one we're going to solve using the quadratic formula. So we've got a, b, and c. Quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So check it out. Negative b is positive 4 plus or minus square root of b squared, which is 16 minus 4. a is 4 and c is negative 1. Don't forget that minus sticks to the 1. And this is all over 2 times 4, which is 8. All right, let's simplify what's in the radical. The negatives are going to cancel out. It becomes 16 plus 16, which is 32. And then we can simplify that square root of 32 because remember, 32 is 2 
times 16. We can take the square root of 16, which is 4. So now we have 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 is 4. 2 stays trapped inside all over 8. Last but not least, we can divide everything by 4. This, this, and this. So that becomes 1 plus or minus 1 radical 2. I don't need to write the 1 though. Over, and then this divided by 4 is 2. And if I want to split this up further, I can make this, this part 1 over 2 or 1 half plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2. Again, these are both equivalent, and it depends on your teacher, but both should be acceptable. But this is the final answer done. Here we're going to start by isolating that radical. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So check this out. Tw square root of 12 minus 2x equals x minus 2. Now I want to get rid of that square root, so I'm going to square both sides like so. So this is going to get rid of the radical, so we got 12 minus 2x. And then over here, I'm going to go ahead and FOIL this because remember, x minus 2 squared is really x minus 2 times x minus 2, which gives us x squared, negative 2x, negative 2x, which is going to make negative 4x, just combining those in this step. And the negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Now we got a quadratic, so we want to set everything equal to 0. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides, and I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. Boom. And we got 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 8. And now we can solve this. So this does actually look factorable to me, so I'm going to go ahead and factor it like so. So what two numbers multiply to negative 8 add to negative 2? That's negative 4 and positive 2, which means we have solutions of 4 and negative 2. But now we got to make sure they're both legitimate because we started with a radical. So we're going to plug these into our original solution and make sure they're good to go. So if I plug 4 in, I get 2 plus the square root of 12 minus 2 times 4 is 8. So 12 minus 8 is 4 equals 4. And we're taking the positive number of this radical. So square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 2 is indeed 4. So 4 is legit. Now let's try negative 2. Uh, I'll do it over here. We get 2 plus the square root of 12 minus 2 times negative 2. Or it's a, you know, the negatives will cancel out. So that's 12 plus 4. So then we have square root of 16 equals negative 2. This is a problem because square root of 16 is 4. 2 plus 4 is 6, not negative 2. So this is an extraneous solution. So our only solution is 4, boom, done. This question is going to involve factoring by grouping. And we know that because there's four terms and it's to the third power is the highest degree. So that's a good indication. We're going to use factoring by grouping. So we're going to start by splitting this up into the two pieces like so. I'm going to factor out the GCF of this one. That's going to be x squared. And I got 2x minus 1 left inside. If you want to verify that this is correct, if you redistribute, you get 2x cubed minus x squared. It's the same thing. So we're good to go. Over here, the GCF is going to be negative 4. So I'm going to factor out a negative 4. And I've got 2x minus 1. And if I redistributed that negative 4, I'd get negative 8x plus 4. But this is what we want. We want the same binomial in both places. Now I can factor out that binomial of 2x minus 1. And that's going to be multiplying this combined with this. So it's going to be x squared minus 4. And check this out. This is a difference of square, so we can factor one more time. 2x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x plus 2 equals 0. Now we got three solutions where these zero out. This one zeroes out at 1 half, right? So x equals 1 half. This one zeroes out at positive 2. This one zeroes out at negative 2. So these are the three solutions done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please click that like button. If you want to see more from the Scalar Learning Channel, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining, and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.